If you're an aspiring screenwriter and you want to sell your screenplay, you are writing what's called a spec script. Spec is short for speculation. It means you were not paid to write this script. Now, most of the screenplays you're gonna read online, and you should be reading tons of screenplays online, are going to be production drafts or shooting scripts. And you need to know the difference because there are things you should not be putting in your spec script. We'll go over what those are. On the title page, you should not be putting any dates. You should not be putting the draft date or the revision date or your birth date. You should not be putting any copyright information. No Library of Congress number, no WGA number, no date with the copyright little logo, and no screaming, angry, all in caps text about how all rights are reserved. On the script itself, you're not gonna put anything in the header besides just the page numbers. So on the top of every single page, you're not gonna put draft information and the title of your script. You're just gonna have page numbers. You don't put scene numbers. Scene numbers go on the front and the back of every slug line. That's for production. They do not belong in your spec script. You usually don't wanna include a title sequence. Now this gets a little iffy because Hollywood changes, but it changes very slowly. And there is a trend towards what I'm seeing, which is people including the title sequence. But if you're a new screenwriter and your title sequence isn't amazing and awesome, you're just putting it in there thinking you have to have it, just don't take it out. No title sequence. You should not be going crazy on camera angles. I talked about this in my video, How to Write a Screenplay 2017. When you're writing a screenplay, don't get so wrapped up in the technical aspects. You are not writing your screenplay for the crew. You're not writing it for the director. You're not writing it for the editor. You are not writing a recipe of how to shoot your movie. You are writing it for producers, for the producer assistants, for agents who represent actors, you're writing it for actors, and you're trying to get them to see the film, to decide if they want to be in the film, if they want to buy the script, if they want to make the movie, then the production draft is for how to make the movie. So you just want to paint the film in the reader's mind. And you want to think of this as explaining a movie you saw to a friend. So if you saw a movie, you would tell your friend something like, so Fred looks out the window and he saw Bob stealing his car. You wouldn't say, so Fred looks out the window and point of view Fred, Bob is seen stealing the car. That's weird and bizarre. So just describe it the way you would describe a movie to a friend. And as I talked about in that video as well, every single time you start a new paragraph, you're implying a new camera angle. You're also implying camera angles by what you're describing. So if you say we see bright black shiny shoes walking down a hallway, that's what's in our mind. We already see that. You don't have to say low angle on black shiny shoes as they walk down the hallway. That's unnecessary. Now, every once in a while, you might need a camera angle just because you want to be really clear about what the movie is. So I'm not so nitpicky about this as other readers where they say absolutely no camera angles. Every once in a while, character point of view could be the fastest way to have us understand the information. Every once in a while, you want to pull back to reveal, but very, very sparingly. You also don't want a whole bunch of transitions between your scenes. These are things you see on the right-hand side, like cut to, dissolve to, smash cut to. That's really for the editor. That's for production. Leave those out. Every once in a while, you could put a cut to, but that's kind of a little more advanced. That's if you're going from one scene to maybe a close-up of something and we don't know where we are yet. So putting a big slug line and telling the audience where we are isn't giving them the same experience as the movie viewer. So if you cut to, you know, hands chopping celery and then you say we are and then you have your slug line, you're in the chef's table or something like that, then that makes sense. But if you're just going to another slug line, there's no reason to put some kind of cut to. There's Cut to is implied when you go to a new slug line. Then you should also not have a ton of caps in your action lines. You should only be capitalizing character names the first time we see them, not throughout. You want to be careful about capitalizing all the props, capitalizing too many sounds. In the production draft, they might capitalize props and sounds because that's relevant for production. But in the spec script, too many caps is incredibly annoying and distracting to the reader. If there is a certain prop that's really important and you want to make sure the reader doesn't miss it, then you can do that. Put it in all caps, but do that maybe once or twice in your entire screenplay. Don't go cap crazy because that is really distracting to the reader. Uh,
if you want an example for a shooting script, I put a link for Deadpool down below. On that, you'll see all kinds of dates on the title page. You'll see copyright information. You'll see scene numbers. You'll see something in the header on each page that has draft information. You'll see a ton of caps everywhere. If you want an example that's more like a spec script, down below I put a link for the script for the movie Passengers that came out not too long ago with Jennifer Lawrence. There you'll see there's no scene numbers. It just has the information for the production company on the front page, the address, and you're just going to put your address. Oh, and don't put some fake production company on your title page, like make one up because you think that makes you look cool. No, that's weird. Don't do that. But the differences between the production script and the spec scripts, they're not that drastic. It's mainly scene numbers and things in the header and too many camera angles, but they're pretty close and you should still be reading tons and tons of scripts online to get the vibe of what you're going to be reading. But just understand the subtle differences between the shooting script and the spec script so you make sure you are writing a spec script. So I hope you liked this video. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. I have all kinds of videos coming and I will talk to you later. Bye.